Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be doing a beginner's guide on setting up a file server on Windows 10 Home. So let's get started. Now, chances are you still have an older laptop or maybe a desktop sitting at home that still runs Windows 10 Home. And instead of having it collect dust, maybe you wanna turn it into a little file server like what I'm doing here, or actually serve some other programs like Space Engineers or something. Now, I know the system that I'm using right now could definitely install FreeNAS or Ubuntu or any other system, but this particular video will just be covering Windows 10. Now, a couple of things I will be talking about in this video will be remote access, static IP, the RAID setup over here, and power management. Now, before I begin, I do wanna give a shout out to my sponsors, Private Internet Access. If you guys are not using VPNs, please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you wanna be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using them for so long. If you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime. I mean, there are times where it's down and, and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using the desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs if i don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my isp to know what i'm doing i wouldn't want them to know either so they have no logs whatsoever it also allows for p2p and if you guys don't know what that is don't worry about it my main use scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so i could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the states but yeah you could do that with this as well and best of all if you're using the link down in the description below you get three free months of private internet access. So not only do they have a 30 day money back guarantee, you also get three free months. So really you have nothing to lose. The system I'm gonna be using today is a system that I built last year, which I'll leave a link on the top left over here. Now this particular system is running a Ryzen 3 3200G, as well as four two terabyte hard drives on a B450 motherboard. And this really cool NAS case that I got going on for it, like it's, it's got the cover and everything. Yeah, if you wanna get more details about this build, I'll leave a link right on the top left. So let's jump into it. For those who are not familiar, I am actually using Pi KVM. This way I have local access to a computer before I actually set up remote access. So if you see this little blue dot, don't be worried because that's what it is. So I'm gonna zoom into this so you can see this as a full screen. So this is a fresh install of Windows 10 and I believe I'm on 1909. Let me see if I could check my system. Uh, yeah, 1909. I mean, they have newer versions, but I'm having, I'm running into a lot of issues with the latest 20 something H or something like that. But yeah, anyway, in particular, what we're gonna do first is try to get remote access. And there are a couple of options that we could go here. So if I was to go over to Google and search for RDP now, Home Edition does not come with RDP and there's no way to enable it through the start menu or something. But if you are using Pro, you could just enable RDP and that is it. You don't have to set up any other remote access except for remote desktop protocol. Now in the Home Edition, since it's disabled by default or it doesn't even have it available in the system, you can get it in a way using something called RDP Wrap. And that's a GitHub repository that you could download. And this will actually replace a file or terminal service itself, the DLL, and allows for certain operating systems like Windows 10 Home Edition to run remote desktop protocol. Now, while this is very, very convenient after you install it, the only downside to this is once you do a Windows update and you know how annoying Windows updates are, it might have a chance of breaking this, which means you have to reinstall it again. But at that rate, that means you don't have access to it to reinstall it. So um, in this instance, I might not be using this one, but I will be using X tight 
VNC server. And Xtype VNC server is a very convenient way and it's also free to give you remote access as well. So I'm gonna head over to that website and I'm gonna download 1.3. And uh, yeah, let's download, which one is it? This one, self-installing window package. Now you want the self-install windows package because it actually will install as a service. This way when you boot up the system and you have that login prompt, you could still access that login prompt. I'm gonna hit next, next, just go through all the installation, you see? Type VNC viewer, I don't need that. Web pages and documentations, don't need that either. And that is it. I should have X type VNC server installed. And let's see, okay, install VNC as a service. Launch, allow access. And here we could actually do our things with like setting up cookies and stuff like that. So I'm gonna accept socket connection. Primary password, you do want to change this because I don't know what the default is. I think it's administrator or something like that. And that's basically about it. Now, once this is running, in my case, this particular server is running at 192.168.105.106 IP address. Uh, what I want to do is actually change that to a static IP. This way, every time the computer boots up, it might have a chance of changing the IP, which I don't want. So I am going to go over to adapter options. Right click on the Ethernet controller, properties, go over to IPv4, this one, Internet Protocol 4, properties, and this is where you would set up your static IP. Now, if, it, if 106 works for you, like the default IP that you just got and we just looked up, um, you might want to keep that. But in my case, I like to keep mine under the 100 range. That's because my router automatically allocates 100 to 150. I don't wanna be within that scope. So I'm gonna choose something either under it or above it. And in my case, I'm just gonna do 81. Uh, 255 would be the net mask or zero. And my default gateway, which is your router's IP. And then your DNS, you could use whatever you want, 8.8.8 .8 or your router IP, whichever one. I'm gonna hit okay, close, and give it a second. It should come back on. My type VNC server should tell me, oh, it didn't do it yet. There you go, 81. So now I have remote access to this computer. And if I was to pop out of that, go into my VNC viewer, which you can download from Real VNC, this website, which I'll leave a link down in the description below. You could now pop into that IP address. There you go. Don't warn me about this again. Continue. We got the password that we set up. And here we have it, guys. This is our desktop. Now, don't worry about the wallpaper. It's gone because it's trying to reduce the connection. But ultimately, we now have remote access to the computer. Now, I'm not going to be using that connection right now because I don't want to have more connections that I need to. So I'm just going to leave it on my Pi KMS. But you get the idea. Now that we have remote access to it, we set up a static IP. The next thing we need to do is set up our RAID. Now you could skip this step if you only have one hard drive plugged into whatever computer you're using. But in my case, I have four and that means I have to RAID them together. And I'm gonna actually be using RAID 5 or, yeah, in Windows case, I don't know what, exactly what it's called, but RAID 5, so I have at least some fault tolerance. If something was to fail, I, have, I could at least fail one hard drive before I lose all my data. And to do that, I'm gonna type in hard drive and go into storage settings right over here. And from here, we set up uh, manage storage spaces, create new pool. Yes, I wanna create that pool. These are the four hard drives that I have, which are two terabytes each or 1.8 because you know, hit continue to create the pool. And in this case, you could assign it the drive letter that you want. Uh, I'm gonna do E the file system, NTFS, so you could do bigger uh, files. And this is what we are talking about, resilience type. They're simple with no resilience, two-way mirror, which will be one in one. So if you got two terabyte hard drive, it'll actually be using one hole as a copy and you only have two terabyte drive left. Three-way mirror and then uh, priority. This is, no priority, parity, parity. This is RAID 5 in their sense. So this means I should be able to use about six terabytes and then two terabytes would be left over just for redundancy. And in here, I'm gonna set it up. You don't wanna use the maximum size of this because total pool capacity is 7.27, which is the full storage of the pool. So in this sense, I would probably give it about like 
4.82 terabytes of, so I'm gonna create storage spaces, give it a few minutes and it's gonna create my RAID. I'm gonna have a brand new drive that is E drive and I also have my redundancy on this. Once we are done, we should be able to see the drive, this PC right over here. Now we're not done yet. Now that we set up the actual hard drive and we can now pop it over and install folders and I'm gonna call this um, share. That's easy enough to remember. Right click and this is where you would give access to a specific group of people. And in here you would do either Don, which is me, or everyone. And you could actually go to the drop down and select everyone here or type it out. Hit add. And this way everyone could actually have read write access or whatever you want. So read and write is fine. Hit share. Uh, turn on network discovery. This way I could actually find this drive. And here is my shared folder. I'm gonna hit done. If I go over to my Raspberry Pi, I should now be able to actually see the share. Network and it might not even show up here, but what I can do is type in the IP address of the server. That's why it's important to have a static IP. All right, now that we hopped over to our IP address and the folder was shared because that's exactly what I shared. Uh, let me drop a file over there. Well, not drop a file. I'm just gonna create new document, MD document, and that's it. If I go over to my Windows machine, which is the home, you would see untitled document, which is the same as what I have over here. And that's basically about it. Setting it up isn't that hard. The next thing I wanna cover is power settings because a lot of people who do this forget that your computer actually goes to sleep sometimes. So you actually have to disable the sleep timer unless you want to wake up the computer every time you need to use it. Um, yeah, I would go over here and actually set up the power and sleep settings. You could actually just turn it off here, but there's some advanced settings that I wanna cover. So I'm gonna go over to additional power settings, go over to balance and change plan settings over here, change the advanced power settings. And since we're using that balance pan setting, some things that I do want to do is you might want to enable your hard drive to turn off after 20 minutes. That will actually save the longevity of the actual hard drives itself. So I do want to keep that on unless you want the fast access, you know, but there are times that maybe you're sleeping and you're not using the computer. You might want to keep that sleep on. Next, head over to sleep and sleep after you want to turn this off. So I'm going to turn this to zero and make sure all the other stuff are is turned off as well. I'm gonna hit apply, hit okay, and go back up. And you see, if I change back, it goes back to never. Another thing you wanna do is make sure your network card doesn't go to sleep. So we're gonna head back over to your network options like we did with the static IP. Change network options, ethernet adapter, properties, configuration, power management, and allow the computer to turn this device to save power. Yeah, you wanna turn that off as well. Hit okay, and that is it. You basically have all the settings that you need. So the Windows 10 Home will actually run as a mini file server without having interruptions. So guys, uh, that is all you need to really set up a basic server on your Windows 10 Home. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.